that he's big. Uh, maybe that's just because I'm 5'4", but he's big. Tall. Outgoing. It's trustworthy. Matt is very comfortable. Warm. He's like a big teddy bear, cuddly. Gives the best hugs. That's a nice <laughs> um, Enveloping. <laughs> Talented. And he's ebullient. He's a very passionate guy, very committed. Courageous. Matt is creative, um, very witty, clever, funny. He's funny. He's funny. Humorous. And he's really funny. He's genuine. Thoughtful. Thoughtful. He's a caring person. Caring. He's caring. Kind. He's very friendly. Just, yeah, friendly in general. Very, very gregarious guy. He's just a fun guy. He's a good guy. Sound like a complete asshole. Oh, I kind of do. Um, I guess caring. <laughs> oh, let me say this with a smile. Caring. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Suffolk, Virginia. I'm the youngest of four kids. Um, I went to a Southern Baptist um, junior high and high school. I went to public elementary school. Um, when I graduated, well, actually my junior year, I decided that I either wanted to go to a Christian college or a very small state school. And then I came to Eastern Mennonite. At first I was a, I think I started as a communications major actually, and realized that had too much to do with computers and I didn't care for it. Um, so I moved from communications to sociology to liberal arts to undeclared, and now I'm theater. Um, and have a music minor and a Bible minor, and I'll probably stay with this until I graduate, or I'll have to stay an extra year. I definitely love to sing. That's probably my forte in music. Um, but for me, singing is a very personal thing when I do it. Um, so yeah, well, you may hear me sing around campus, but when I sing, it's very personal, and for me also contributes to that idea of being in, in relationship with a God. Um, I think sound is such an amazing thing that no matter whether a person's listening to me or not, they're experiencing my sound um, you, because my vibrations are surrounding your body. So it, it, it's such an intimate form of art, like a painting. You can close your eyes and you don't see it, but if I'm speaking or singing or making music, there's no way you can avoid it. Um, so to me, music is something that's very sacred and is something that needs to be respected. Um, I, I, I would put it in a, yeah, I guess it's a driving force, but. It's, it's a very intimate thing for me. Um, probably the most extreme thing in my life is theater. I'm there almost constantly. I just directed and I've acted and I'm gonna be starting to write some stuff in the spring. Um, my passion while I'm here is doing the improv troupe, Artists Anonymous. Um, we don't perform very much, but when we do, it's really fun. You're doing it right now. No, I'm not. No, you're just doing it in something else now. No, I'm not. <laughs> because my freshman year, sorry, his freshman year, my sophomore year, he auditioned for a play called Bury the Dead, and I was in it, and we acted together. And our relationship has been one which has been both mutually friendship and a work partnership in the theater. It's too late, it'll never be the same. <laughs> Don't say that, I can, I can grow my hair out again. best friend. We've been best friends since freshman year when we were in a play together. Get over! So you could be, you could put your hand on my shoulder again, I'd be your little hunchback! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll blink more to help with the clarity. <laughs> I think I'm largely defined by my faith. I know that's a big, big thing. Um, but I feel that my connection with, with God um, is what drives a lot of my day-to-day -day. and also I'm, I'm really big on making sure that I'm always in 
right relationship with God, but also right relationship with people. Um, to me, it comes down to that. And it's simple, but long as you're good on the both planes, I think that your life should end up pretty well. I, this is, this ties into the homosexuality issue. Um, I, when I came to EMU, I was like, well, I'm going to get cured. I was, I was still closeted and I feel a horrible amount of guilt. Um, so I went to get counseled at the seminary. Um, they just, there was an email about it, so I signed up. And I went through about three months of counseling, um, may, maybe almost four. But by the end of that, um, well, my counselor ultimately said that because of my, I had weak spiritual discipline, that I had homosexual uh, thoughts or, or desires. Um, so well, she was like, okay, I'll, I can, everyone can pray more, everyone can read more, and everyone can be closer to God. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, towards the end of that process, I was being um, prayed prayers of exorcism over and anointed with oil. Um, looking back, I see that was probably not a great experience for me. It was, um, it was feeding the guilt that I already had. Um, but it, I, it, it was something I had to go through because now I can, it, because I went through that, I can appreciate what I found now. The process of coming out, well, yeah, after I had received the spiritual counseling, um, that was my freshman year. And my, sprint, my summer after my freshman year, I was an intern at a church. And um, at, part of the thing of the intern, I did a lot of work with youth group and missions, and that was great. And then I had to preach a sermon during the summer. And at one point, I just felt horribly guilty because I thought, I don't even have my own life straight. How am I going to preach a sermon to these people? And, and I had this horrible thing of homosexuality looming over me because at that time it was still a horrible thing. Um, and that's why I, I kind of had a breakdown. I actually remember I was... <laughs> I dishwashed too, and I had to go out back, and I leaned against the wall that the dumpster was at the restaurant, and I slid down the wall in all its dumpster ooze glory, just sobbing, um, because I, I didn't know what to do. But, so I, that's where I decided, okay, something has to happen, I, because at that, by that point I had prayed and had many sleepless nights and was just constantly in battle with myself for this to go away. But it wasn't, so I either had to figure out a way to live with this, something, something had to give. Um, then fall semester, I um, <clears throat> came back to EMU. I was a ministry assistant on a hall, and I still had some of this, is this okay for me kind of thing. Um, there was a situation where I surprised myself, and I asked a male friend if we could kiss. Um, that freaked me. I was really tired when I do it. Normally, I would never do that in my judgment because that's not practical, Matt. <laughs> um, but I was very tired. And that, and he said no. I was like, okay, that's fine. And then I went to my room and I emailed one of the campus pastors immediately and said, we have to meet. We have to meet tomorrow. I, I'm, gonna, I'm resigning from MA because I, because I breached trust. I, I, I couldn't do this. Um, the campus pastor gave me some advice that I wasn't, the campus pastor was the third person in the whole world I had ever said anything about this to. The first being the counselor and the second being the boy I asked to kiss. <laughs> um, but the campus pastor said, well, try. I was like, try? Well, experiment. I was like, what? A campus pastor is telling me this? Um, I don't quite know, know what they meant by experiment, but I was like, okay, so at least this isn't... Um, completely, I, I got this gleam of, well, wait, maybe this could be okay. Um, then I started to read a lot. I read everything on both sides of the subject because I didn't want to be a person that self-justified. Um, so, and I, and I gradually, I came across this idea that of God, God is love and love God, love people. It's simple. And nothing that in my life violates the life of Christ or anything. So then it was Christmas break, and I decided, well, it's Christmas, and I'm coming out to my parents. I have to. Um, so I wrote a, a letter to them. It ended up being about 11 pages long because I couldn't say three words. I had to write it out in 11 pages. Um, and then the day that my second niece was born, uh, we came home from the hospital, and I called Mom and Dad to the living room. 